five, four, three. Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Podcast. I'm Jeff Burlingame here with my co-host Paul Glass. And today we have a very special guest in Mike Catch, Katchkowski. He is a local Oakland County area badass. He's on the Hopi fishing team and he runs some bass kayak league tournaments, which we're going to talk a lot about today. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm doing as good as I can right now. Well, awesome, brother. It's uh, great having you on. Appreciate you giving us some time today. Uh, we got lots to talk about, lots of questions for you. Before we get into the show, if you guys like the podcast, be sure to subscribe. Drop us a review, five stars if you will, please. Throw us a comment. Let us know things we can do to improve the show. And as always, you can find us elsewhere at Burley Fishing on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube, the Burley Fishing Channel. And without further ado, Paul, let's go. So... As always, question of the week. This one is. I, I already. I knew, Paul, I knew I was going to ask froze. this question at some point to somebody. It's an Paul. easy one. But if you're Paul a bass stop. fisher. No, son of a. I'll stop you for us. <laughs> hey, it's early in the episode. It might as well happen now. <laughs> Am I back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna count you in, Paul. Ready? Ah, Five, of... four, three. <laughs> All right. Question of the week. This one is easy. It is one that I knew I was gonna ask a guest at some point because it's like one of my. I always think about this when you're bass fishing. If you're a big bass fisherman, you hook into other fish. It's like you almost can't help it. If you're gonna if you were gonna accidentally hook into another fish, what would you prefer that it would be and why? Probably a muskie. Oh, just casual. Good call, though. I mean, a sleeper have you ever fished on St. Clair? I have a cottage on St. Clair. Our family does on the Canadian side. And I have caught a muskie on my kayak in St. Clair. I, I St. catch St. a lot of accidental muskie out there. so. Awesome. How do you get them, though? Is it like crankbaits usually? Uh, Jerkbait, yeah. Yeah. Spring? Nice. Uh, all time. Oh, they are chock full in there. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot in there. Dude, good but pick. Definitely my, uh, accidental fish. I love it. Uh, for me, I'm always happy with the accidental pike, but musky obviously, uh, would be amazing as well. It's just funny for for me and i think for paul as well he'll probably agree with this uh is like when we're bass fishing and we catch pike we almost get more excited i mean if we're on st Clair, i'm sure like musky would obviously be 10x that but like for us we get more excited when we hook into a pike uh versus like i don't know bass bass tournament you're gonna talk to me about this mike uh, a lot a lot of like the tourney anglers every time i watch them like they hook into a pike they're like ah it's a dang pike and they like throw it off which i get if you're under pressure to catch bass and that's what helps you win you'd be like gosh dang now i gotta take care of this other fish and hopefully like maybe don't hurt the fish or lose my lure or hurt myself and it's wasting time so i guess i get that but like just casually fishing like paul and i do i love catching a pike all day long i always get pumped usually when i get a pike on i just hold it next to the kayak and let it shake itself off no, <laughs> no, Mike. I, dude, I'll pick it up. I hold it up. I I'll like cheer to the whole lake. I'm like, look at what I did. And everybody's like, you're dumb. And Mike's over in the corner, like, are you serious, guy? <laughs> All right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Most people think that I'm out fishing bass. I'm just accidentally catching bass, and I'm actually looking for pike. <laughs> <laughs> Another largemouth. Dang it. Oh, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> Another That's not a pike. Yeah, no, I mean, I I like to I like to eat pike. I like that I'm a little bit scared when one comes in the boat. Like when you like don't grab it and it slips in and it's like you know shooting around. I am like, dude, that's like I, there's an element of danger. They're they are delicious to eat, uh, and they're just big old sobs. I they're awesome. I love it. I, mine would definitely be pike. Although I almost went crappie. Cause it's kind of close. Cause if you catch a crappie on a bass lure, it's going to be a monster. And you're like, Oh, I just got my lunch. We're good. Yep. Yeah. I'm sticking, with, I'm sticking with Pike. All right. You know, I have a funny story about that. Yeah. 
first time I met one of the co-directors of our uh, our kayak fishing series. We're on this lake, and there's a guy who's new to fishing in a little rowboat. He catches a pike. It gets off in the boat, and the guy gets up, runs to the front of the boat, almost falls in because <laughs> he's afraid of this pike trying to bite him. It was the funniest thing I've ever witnessed. While fishing. Dude, that is all. You know, I, I, I. Th- the element of fear is like real. And if you're new to fishing, it's got to be. I'm trying to remember. So the first time I caught a pike, it's, <laughs> but it's got to be. It's got to be. I mean, that has got to be like a stunning thing, especially like if you've never seen one, and all of a sudden you just bring in like a half dinosaur uh, into your boat. That's got to be like messed up. On a sitting I, side, though, on a sitting side, I've caught him on like I caught my PB pike on a sitting side kayak, and I was, and I did, I did like I got my grip and grin and everything, man, and I had no fish grips. I was like, and I had never held a pike by like the jaw, like I'd never done that. I was like, how do you even? What do I do? And, and I just had to figure it out on the fly. I was like, whatever. I had him in my net, and I was like, we're we're doing this, and I did it, and it was terrifying because like they fall in the boat. <laughs> You're toast. Yeah, it's like a cage match. I mean, you're like you could legit get hurt. <laughs> it's close. Real bad. To sit inside. No, I'm they a, will I'm... try to bite you. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. no joke. Oh for sure. That's why I love them. They're just full of piss and vinegar. Like that's, I just, oh man, I love Pike. <laughs> so you on Lake St. Clair, a lot of times if you're out in the morning uh, or in the evening and you're in relatively shallow wa- shallow water, you'll see what you think are Pike. Or musky feeding on the surface, but they're actually, well, we call them gar pike, right? But gar. Um, you want to talk about a fish that doesn't mind biting you or a fish that is like. Well, it's just razors sticking out all sides. <laughs> like, for those of who, gonna for get those, you. For those who don't know, listening, gar pike, it would be, imagine, imagine a very, a, like a, a four inch, the body's like four or five inches tall. And like three or four inches, depending on the size, three or four inches wide. Um, and it's about, I don't know, the average size in St. Clair that you'll see by the shore is probably two feet to three feet long. And they've got a snout, like, an, like a really needle nose alligator snout. And it's just scissor, it's just like scissor needles all the way <laughs> along. And it's, and it's wearing armor. I mean, it's, they've got armor. Body on. armor rigged, man. That's a dope fish, though. <laughs> We catch those. We catch those at night, and I'll tell you what: if you were in a kayak and you that was like the first fish that you reeled in on accident, good luck. Good. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like, <Terrible>. Sayonara. <laughs> like, so, so Mike, are you are you like do you multi species at all, or are you like just kind of a bass all the time kind of guy? I, I mean, before I got into the whole tournament scene, I was salmon and steelhead and walleye i didn't even care to fish for bass at all and then i got a kayak and you know it's just too easy i can drive right down the road and go bass fishing so yep it's not, the everyday now, fish I'm, man <laughs> i mean i'm pretty i'm about 90 percent bass now um but i still go out for water uh, musky and uh do some salmon fishing in the hobie and yeah that's gotta happen Paul. no more no more jigging for walleye i it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's a lot of time true Mm -hmm. so let let me ask you this because i might now have a friend are you a catch and keep or are you a catch and release or somewhere in between what fish yes (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if I, if I catch... say, okay, yeah. If you catch a bass, you're what we all know. Ninety percent of the time, you're gonna be letting them go. Yes. Let's say it's. Let's say you luck into a walleye when you're, you know, trolling a crank or something. Yeah, I'll keep that. Yes. All has this. It took fourteen episodes, folks. <laughs> fourteen. <laughs> episodes and finally somebody said catch and keep god you did it you did I it Paul. This. quit this is last episode and, done yeah End every time i say like because i'll keep a smallmouth bass and i'll make i'll make sandwiches 
I'll save them. I'll save them and I'll mix them in with my bluegill and my pike, and I'll make like like bass cakes. Come at me. <laughs> now we're going to get straight one star reviews. Yeah. Thanks to Paul. Yeah, be like, Paul, <laughs> he dragged his kayaks and he keeps bass. He's an yeah. evil human being. <laughs> ruin the show, Paul. You ruin the show. Like I said, come at me. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now we have to get to the weekly check in because I feel like this is, we're going to, we're going to bookend the episode. With the Hobie brand, so I'm gonna start it though. This this spoiler is the alert. yeah spoiler alert. This is the this is the top pe- this is or this would be the bottom piece of bread. We're gonna build on this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jeff go. We I like to I like to let Jeff go first to to provide the foundation for how to answer this question. And then Mike, I'm gonna come to you, and then I'll back clean up with like a five second, you know, finisher. But that's it. So. Without further ado, weekly check-in. Jeff, what have you been up to for the last week? So Paul and I have been up to similar things. <laughs> and, but but Paul's beers in this hard right direction, like not so great. So uh, we picked up our new Hobies. So I went and grabbed mine from Gull Lake Marine uh, up in Coopersville. Uh, and thank you, Nick, if you're listening, you better be listening. Cause I told you that I have the show and I put you on it. Uh, I put him on the video. He's actually on the YouTube video too, but, um, they kind of hooked us up and I traded in my 12 foot pro angler with the 180 drive leveled up to that 14 foot, like freaking night and day, by the way, uh, with the 360. and then Paul and I went out and fished a uh, local lake which is like a decent size lake. And the wind was crazy, which was like the perfect day. Our goal was just to test out the pro anglers and be like, okay, let's kind of get used to these new boats. Mine was already pre-rigged, luckily for me. You'll hear why that's not so great for Paul in a second. But uh, I got out on that lake and I was in heaven. And I was just like kind of freaking giggly the whole day. I was just laughing and smiling the whole time, like just turning all over the place. And the wind was crazy it was like what 14 15 mile an hour 15 was the average yep it was a ridiculously windy day and we held spots no problem and that like just cemented my love for that 360 drive i was so it it just made me really happy and proud of making that purchase i was like yes it worked and i was just happy i didn't really catch anything for fish i caught one bass but like overall great day on the water and I was happy with it. Uh, the rest of the week, I spent installing all of the things that were on the 12 foot to my 14 foot. So I had to redo the uh, Lowrance, uh, get my fish finder on there. And then I installed the Boondocks landing gear today, uh, which is going to be life changing. Even though I didn't have any of the hardware and I had to go jerry rig this thing, uh, Paul hooked me up with some other stuff that I'm going to get this weekend and swap it out. So basically, just building. I didn't do any fishing other than when Paul and I went out on that was Saturday, right? Yeah, we went on Saturday. So other than that, I've just been building, but that's so I can fish a lot more later. So I'm excited about it. So Mike, what have you been up to this week? Uh, I don't want to bring you down, but work. Oh no, (laughs) you're not bringing me down. No, who works Uh, anymore? We, uh, we, (laughs) it's okay. I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a trailer so I can trailer around two at once trying to get the wife into it and everything so you have i correct me if i'm wrong you've got two pro anglers you got one 360 and then a 180 right yep are they both 14s or is 112 and a 1 of 14 both 14s Oof, good choice i, I can't prefer go back. 14 i always tell everyone to get a 14 it's and it's not it's just not enough more money like it, it's not that much more expensive that it would make sense not to and like the first time i did the 12 and i told everybody i didn't make a mistake and i'm here to tell you i made a mistake back in the day and i should have done the 14 it was so dumb like for a couple hundred bucks you're already spending thousands it's like no brainer if you guys are out there listening you're thinking about a pro angler if, we're, if, if you're even thinking about like the outback because i was sitting in an outback and paul was like no and then i sat in a pro angler and we were both like we have to do this and unfortunately i went with the 12 i should have done the 14 i'm stupid and yeah i'm with you it's so much bigger you don't even think like because they prioritize 
the cockpit is so much bigger. It's not the back end. It's the cockpit and the storage in the front. And it's, oh, my God. Way. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> don't, don't go 12s. And never... they're, they're faster, more stable. I got to hear more. Wider. I got to hear more about this trailer, though. I gotta hear more about this trailer. So it's like it's it's there it's two side by side, right? Nope. It's a single place uh jet ski trailer. Yep. Oh. I put I had like an old ladder rack. Oh the ladder rack onto it. So I got one on top, one on the bottom. But it's kind of a Franken trailer. <laughs> Perfect. Debating if I should wrap it with duct tape to make it look <laughs> right. But, but like keep, the, the stage. keep the duct tape, keep the duct tape roll hanging off the back, just like so it blows in the wind. <laughs> well, so yeah, everybody... something like that. <laughs> you should just tie some string, like in knots, around the cord. Like, well, this Unnecessary. Is really... <laughs> yeah. Unnecessary it, the string. <laughs> it's not so, pretty, but it works. So we're all about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, are you gonna try and get like a box on it so you can like put all your crap in there? Uh, probably not. I I you're not a welder. My my buddies always they can't believe it. I just leave all my rods in the kayak at all times. Transport it with the rods in the holders, everything. I leave the fish finder on. I leave my crate on, everything. I just throw it in my truck and go. Dude, I I love it. I <laughs> like. I leave as much as I can on there. Pretty much like bring the tag, like the crate, the H crate. Do you use an H crate? Not yet. It changed my life. I've had, I've, I've gone from the milk crate though. I've, I've had the twenty dollar crate that I just like rigged out to do whatever I needed it to do. And then I had like a Cabela soft side crate for a long, long time. And I switched to this H crate, and it's my mind is blown. Like, cause I just mount it to that. So then I have like the big Cabela's bag where I drag my tackle out and just grab two, three, four, five, seven boxes that I need for the day. Right, Paul? <laughs> Paul has two boxes. I usually have seven. <laughs> and I'm like, and I only need all of these. Let's go. Literally works out so they can drag all this shit into the kayak. Dude, 100%. <laughs> you don't? Is that not why we work out? What do you work out for? Why? I'll just quit right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it though it's awesome uh yeah what else anything else for your week just work you didn't get out one time nope not once i uh Tomorrow. this weekend I, this weekend i did i i fished all weekend so yes i gotta take the rest of the week off now <laughs> <laughs> no. you have kids. Do, you have, do you have kids though yeah i got two see you're and they're not like 35 and you know 40 right like you're yeah everyone everyone who's a dad knows what's going on right now <laughs> hi dads exactly H holler at your dads <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that but like you know you got priorities so um i will say i also bought a hobie pro angler 360 14 foot arctic blue camo which by the way i have a gripe I, you this, have this, many gripes. I have. I, I'm a great machine, but I had. This is a. This is my old man gripe for the episode. The camo that it used to come in, the fact that it doesn't come in that the 360 doesn't come in like a legit just camouflage of some sort, or just like a really boring color. It's. It almost steered me away from it. I, I was that a dark just, green. Yeah, be almost I want, brown. yes, yes. Yeah. I wanted that. I wanted it real bad. And Mike, are you a, you're a, uh, you're not only a fisherman. You're, you're a, I would call you a sportsman. Do you shoot, do you shoot ducks? I've never been duck hunting, no. What? I, I have, <laughs> I have a duck blind for my kayak. You have a duck blind and you've not. Yes, for the pro that. angler? Yep. Guess nice. what? We've got stuff we're gonna do here come <laughs> October. Um, I oh, yeah. I just spent like a you know a trillion dollars on a kayak and and my mind is literally like, well no I can't use it for duck hunting because it's like bright blue. I mean it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be fine. I'm probably gonna end up getting a canoe, but that was it. All right, that's my gripe. That's all I got. That's my gripe. 
Well, did you, did you have the camo? I, I my uh, 180 is camo, but uh, the 360 I went with the Amazon camo. Uh, the the neon green. That'll be real good for duck hunting for sure. But I'm telling you, they have these duck blind covers yes. that you got to check out, and it's made for a PA uh, 14. Oh. Really? Yeah. Now that yeah, I did dude. not know existed. I knew that yeah. they had like those like bungee cord things that you could like put over the top. I'm. Oh, don't wait. Here's a question though, and I guess I don't know the answer to this. I don't really think you can't like lean back in the seat though. You can recline it. You can. Yeah. Yeah, and you can adjust the backrest all the way down too. Bye bye. You, you got. The... See ya. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Remember, there's uh, there's the four cables that you can pull up front, right? So you got the transducer, your rudder, your skeg. The other one flips the seat to the lower back setting, and then you can recline the top of the seat all the way back. They're all dead. Good all job. Right, so so Paul, Paul and I will get blinds, and then the three of us, I'm putting it on this episode right now, it's going to happen. The three of us will go duck hunting. Paul has to take two rookies duck hunting. How does that yeah. go? Oh. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully well enough so that nobody dies and the only soul nobody dies this day. waterfowl. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an ideal I've always, start. I've wanted to. I planned on going last fall in the kayak, but it just didn't happen. No, it's going to happen. I'll do all the scouting. I have all the decoys. Uh, Curves eight. Just br- if you can bring camos and a firearm, or even just one of you can bring a firearm. <laughs> I'll just do camera, man. I, I I got the camera for you. <laughs> That's fine. Then we're good. I got shotguns. Oh, dude. Then oh, plural. Wait, no. who's bringing breakfast though? Touche. I, I, I guess I have to because oh, I, I, am... I have zero firearms, so I will handle food. I handle, the food. And I handle the food on trips. I will be bringing breakfast, bacon burritos. That's your only option. <laughs> dude, you have one choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Enough banter. Show me. It's time to roll. This so, whole episode's banter, dude. All we do on podcasts is banter. Touche. But now we're on to the <laughs> we're on to the banter meet. So, uh, <laughs> so, so for those who are not aware, you're running on the Tourney X platform, right? Yep. So just give us like like the lay the the newbie foundation for like what what Tourney X is and kind of just in general like the the very light details of like kind of how it works well tourney x is an app that so we use for tournaments to you know we do the cpr the catch photo release put the fish on the measuring board yep doing it now uh you know you take a picture of it submit it through that app and then it goes to a random whoever is set up to be the judge And they can see that picture and zoom in and do everything they need to do so that they can say, okay, yeah, that is a 19-inch bass or it's not a 19-inch bass. And, I mean, it's nice because then if, uh, you know, somebody catches a 19-inch bass and say somebody else catches an 18 and a half, then it places them for you. You don't have to do that. So, Definitely awesome. helps. Um, it's so easy let me to ask you this. I don't have to have a bag full of gigantic bass in the back of my kayak in order to participate. No. Is there a giant stage filled with hundreds of bass angler fans that I get to raise up my gigantic bass for when I win? We're working on it. Okay. That's the only thing that I really want. So if you can add that, then I'm in. <laughs> you just raise your phone. You just go like, that bass. yeah, you just lip. Can you lip an iPhone? Just, ah. you know, those little rings that they put on the people put on their phones so that they don't like drop them or whatever. I don't know what they're for. You know what I'm talking about. They need to make one that's like a bass, like a, a bass lip so I can grab that. <laughs> that might be a good idea. That's my million. Every, <laughs> Don't Delete this episode this immediately. My million dollar <laughs> idea just happened. <laughs> we just became rich and famous. I'm so excited. I think excited. it's like a more of a thousand dollar idea, but like I still think that's, it's pretty. I think it's still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then that takes place like that. That basically that's your check in. 
there's no weigh-ins, right? Right. I'm not like out here with like a scale being like, look at the picture of my scale. It's right. like straight up, you gotta have now. Here's a question. You need a bumble, right? Well, I was just about yeah. to say. So, like in terms of like things that you need, you need a a modern telephone that you can download the app on and use, oh, yeah. you know, the internet. That would be one. <laughs> What uh, what else do I need? What else do I need to participate? Assuming that I have access to the internet and a telephone. Um, a certified measuring board. So certified, that's key. K- KBF rules are like a f- uh, fish sticks, um, a hog trough, or a catch board. Which so the are millionaire three board. Three different type types of measuring boards. Um, so, so the the bump board is the measuring board. I'm just I'm I know you know this. Yep. I'm, I'm clarifying for those who for, are for the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the bump board is essentially like a ruler for a fish, and on one side it's got like a flat edge so that you know when you're taking a picture on your on your I like saying telephone on your telephone you slide the lip of that bath right up to that 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 flat edge. And then it measures it measures out the rest of the fish, right? So you can see right where the Tip tail the ends. Yeah, and that's your that's the length of your fish. So that's that's your bump board. And those general like I think the catch board's like sixty bucks or something like that. Yeah, and that's like the metal one. That's like the fancy one. Right. But then your your other two are twenty to forty bucks, something like that. Right. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So does the Hobie measuring board count? Comes with an extra yes. inch on every fish, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> dude, I, I went all in. I got the freaking Hobie board, no, and then you, you didn't, didn't mention Get it. You here. didn't mention it, and I was like, "Oh no, I can't play. <laughs> I have to throw this one away." <laughs> it's a hog trough, right? Yeah. Hog trough yeah. does the, the yeah. Hobie board, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So, I thought um, it would fit better in my Hobie, and I was wrong. <laughs> no, it's just you just paid ten bucks extra. <laughs> ah, you're just stupid. Whatever. <laughs> It was twenty. It was twenty. It was the same. It was like the cheap friend. It's just plastic. Whatever. Yeah. I'll so lose then, it and then I'll get a better one. It works. Hopefully you'll break it on the shark you try and put on there. Dude, yes. <laughs> so if you so you get you get your certified. Now you said something that I think uh, is kind of important. So you said the KBF certified bump board. Define KBF for the folks. KBF is kayak bass fishing. And it's just, it's basically like BASS or, you know, FLW. It's like the governing body for the yakers. Yeah. It's the I NCAA mean, now, that you don't hate. Now, <laughs> what? fishing has, there's three major um, tournaments now the uh, Bass Series, and then there's KBF and Hobie BOS now so i mean as a whole in there kayak fishing blew up you know 2018 yeah i mean yeah fireworks this year this year's gonna be huge everybody sat at home for a long time and (laughs) a lot of people bought new kayaks so yeah jeff uh how was it buying your kayak did they have tons in stock no (laughs) go on like like all right so hobie hobie's been as every other manufacturer has been shut down for a while so you know whatever was out there has depleted because everybody's buying that and you know people are making ridiculous life decisions like buying a hobie pro angler (laughs) at paul and you know it happened so i bought the I, i bought the second to last at Go Lake, you bought the last at Summit. I bought the last at Summit, the Arctic. That was it, you know. And, and like he would have gone to Go oh, Lake. We were uh, yeah. going, yeah. We were planning on going there, but then they had they had one blue, three green, and then the greens were gone except for mine, and the blue is gone. No, <laughs> wait. <laughs> you bought one of the greens from Go? Uh, no, from Summit. From Summit? Dude, oh, okay, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that is funny. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were like, our goal for that video was like, let's both go to the same place, yeah. do like the, we get we get hyped up, we get the boats, and like, that's the video. And then he's like, yeah, they don't have a blue, so I'm going to go to Summit. The day before, I call. Yeah. I, so, I would have done it earlier, but I was selling my previous kayak. 
throws I, sold, I sold it, and like that afternoon, I was like, "Hey, what's up, guys? You know, boop, 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 boop. Uh, go. You know, what's going on? Can I grab? Can I put a deposit down on that blue one?" They're like, "Oh yeah, no, because it's gone." And I was like, "Oh." Yeah, they no. had it. They had it the day before. Yes. Literally that day, and it's like normally, Virgo. normally like a year ago. Place has four Hobies. You call them today, and you're like, "All right, yeah, I'll think about it." A month later, you call back. They still has four Hobies. So, but in this day and age, current status situation, uh, they're all gone. They're oh, like, accessories, yeah. unfindable. Everything's yeah. gone. Yeah, I can't. I need a, a a battery for my power pole, and I can't get it. <laughs> and, and my anchor wizard is back ordered for like ten years. So. Here we are. <laughs> I got <laughs> wheels, though. I got wheels. I got a fish finder. I have more than enough to have a good day, but I have no anchor system, and I don't want to drill another gigantic one-inch hole in my boat to do the wiring for that anchor, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I did it on the 12, man. And, and like when I re- when I <laughs> when I traded this in, <laughs> they're like, we don't want your uh, micro Swiss anchor. cheese no. boat. I was like, really? Because there's a one-inch hole in the back of this boat. Are you sure you don't want that? And they said no. So I took it out, and I just left the uh, the little Hobie cap, the through-hole kit. I just left that in there with uh, all three of the solid rubber grommets. I was like, enjoy that thing in the back of your boat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Uh, yeah. Now, here's a question for you. How many times do you measure something before you drill a hole in your kayak? Twice. Twice Twice only. I used to do, first of all, (laughs) with my first two kayaks, I did one measurement. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. 100%. I was like, it's good. Here we go. Drill. And (laughs) I can tell you that the adage of measure twice, drill once is very, very true. Because I just installed my boondocks today, and I like quadruple measured everything, and it was the easiest thing ever. So. It's very, it's very strange the progression that you went fake. through. <laughs> yeah, my, my, what? How many times? Ta- I know you drilled through a kayak before. The, fr- what was your progression? Did you go from like measuring thirty times to measuring twice, or measuring twice and now measuring a hundred times? Um, it still takes me a whole day just to drill one hole. Thank you. <laughs> I, I popped four holes. <laughs> Jeff <laughs> just grabs my shotgun. I was like, got him. <laughs> it took me. It took me five minutes to drill all four of those holes. What the fuck? Oh no, bro! Uh, I, I'm dude, just imagining I'm Jeff taker, keeps man. like a uh, like a red solo cup or like a stack of them for when the water starts coming in. Just <laughs> got it. Oh. I got my assault paddle. I just <laughs> wait a it out. <laughs> well, no, he had to drill another hole for a pump. Yeah, to pump I the drill water. a hole to let the water out, and then it's fine. <laughs> Is that I don't, how it works? I went. I, I'll never forget when I drilled holes. So I had a um, Old Town Predator MX, the first version of it, and uh, not the pedal, the like standard. Did they make it? They never made an MX pedal. Not the so MX. just the MX. Um, Thirteen. Yeah, and so uh, I I distinctly remember the first day that I like bought all the stuff and I had all the wiring. I drew it all. You drilled a giant hole. Too. I, Yes, this I is did. the scariest of holes. And the reason I did the big hole, though, was because I knew I was going to be able to use it potentially for multiple things. So I, I, like, you know how the Hobie has, like, the pass-through where, you're, like, you put the wire through and then you tighten it and it's, like, now watertight? That didn't exist at the time. And so I got my own and made my own. And then that required, like, a three-quarter inch hole. And so I did two of those. Because you got to have like you know two lines for your for your fish finder, right? transducer, and then power, and so I I stressed about it to the to the I am a do-it-yourselfer, and I knew this was going to be like a thing that I was going to be doing many times. So like this is the first time I'd ever done it. It's a lot of there's a lot of money on the line, and you know like you know anytime you put a hole in a boat, you know, you're you're taking some risk, and so uh, it's gotten it's gotten better since then. I don't think I'm at like your state where that's like a full day, but I also have never had a kayak that would like, you know, make other people cringe when they find out like how much money I would like spend Jeez. on that kayak. And so, you know, I didn't have that. I had like a very expensive kayak, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't cringe worthy. And so, but yeah, I I may my I have a I have a measure three times soul just 
as like the baseline. And so, yeah, when you're drilling a hole in the boat, I was, I was definitely a little more, uh, I wasn't a full day, but I was definitely stressing about it. I, I did, I did find a very important trick that we're going to use on Paul's boat for the boondocks though. Uh, so I like, I was being very smart about it this time. I was, I was much less smart. I drilled that one inch hole (laughs) with a spade bit, (laughs) like just, (laughs) Just <laughs> and it, it like shot off to the side and it definitely marked up that Hobie. So uh, you guys can't see Mike, but you can just see. I can feel the stress. He's stroking his beard and just understanding he's... like the pain that Jeff put that boat through. Mike's <laughs> really mad at me right now. Like I punched children. Like <laughs> yeah. just it's right like, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what? I took care of this one. I took care of this one, Mike. I, I measured multiple times, more than twice, actually. And I actually, so have you installed boondocks before? Are you familiar no, with like, no. okay. So they're very difficult to install, but they have a, like a steel bar. It was like a nine inch steel bar that goes into that sidewall of the hull, like where it's recessed and like you go above the foam that's like punched in there. And yeah, so you drill right under the H rail. So you actually add a spacer to the H rail cause it's flexible. So it like bends up a little bit, not too much that it actually wrecks it just like half an inch. And that's where like this, uh, rail for the, uh, for the landing gear, uh, sits. So you can actually like put the wheels in from the side. Cause they're just on like a big steel bar. I mean, you've probably seen them before, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to drill four holes cause you have like two five sixteenths bolts that go in on each side to hold the this bar the crossbar in place and i took the little steel bar that goes on the inside and i mounted my little like brackets that hold the bar in place and then i put it on there and i measured it out perfect and then i masking taped it down and then i went back in and like drilled it that way once i lined everything up like i fully measured it out put my little crosshair on there and i I drilled a pilot hole even i never drilled pilot holes i just go (laughs) right into it so i drilled a pilot hole this time and like was very very careful and you guys would be proud of me i understand that i should have done this every time before <laughs> remind me to never let jeff put together my ikea hey you want me to build this thing for you paul <laughs> don't worry bro Jeez. i'll have it up in 10 minutes <laughs> yeah it can only hold a half a coffee mug but yeah go for <laughs> it all right Oh, I love it. <laughs> this was supposed to be a Hobie sandwich. We're not at the end yet, so let's revert back to the let's go back to the okay, show okay. meet here. So, bump board we talked about, um, which is your your ruler for your fish, and that's what you're taking the picture of. You're taking a picture of fish on your bump board, and that is what the random judge is judging. And kudos to the random judges. Thank you for being random judges. Um, I do not want to do that job. Uh, <laughs> what what uh what so we telephone, internet, um, bump board. What else? What else? Well, and we're, kayak. So what else do you need? PFD. Yeah. Um, and we usually use like an identifier card where we put a code on, you know, so you know that the person caught the fish that day as opposed to last week and they're trying to submit it into this tournament so this is like the uh back to the future newspaper show me the date yes love it smart perfect and your name right that's got your yeah your information on there yeah i mean sometimes you have your name on it sometimes you don't because it goes through the tourney x app so they point we are but typically typically you have your name on it i just want i just want somebody to hold the newspaper and then also be living the past (laughs) you can find me at paul underscore j underscore glass doing that with all the rest of my fish (laughs) paul's like i don't get it this is my identifier card i did it did i do it right what more do you want from me all right so uh, then I guess we're gonna we're gonna blow through the rest because we bantered our way right past the tournament stuff. So it's an app. It's pretty easy. Is the app free? Yes. Duh. So just uh, it, right? Get on it. What are your what are typically what do I, there's got to be a fee for there's got to be a, a tournament fee right for getting in for most tournaments? Absolutely. Uh, our tournament series we kind of designed it for 
the newer anglers. So I, we only charge twenty five dollars per tournament, and ours is actually based on the biggest bass. <clears throat> so oh, so long. that was a question I was gonna ask. Is like, are there different categories of tournaments? So you're you're just big fish. It's like whoever right. gets the biggest fish of the day. Right. We actually pay out the top three. So um, we had one this last weekend. It was our first event, and I th- the first place guy got 350, second place got 200, and the third place got uh, I think is 170 or something like that. Nice. And so, that was all based on one fish. Bang. So this is like fantasy football where you actually control your own destiny. Yeah. Dang. Not bad. I like that. Not so bad. what? Are there bag limit tournaments? Yep. They have, uh, a, most of them are f- your best five fish. Mm. Wow. I know we've been talking about potentially doing a best three fish. I've heard of them, but I've never fished in one of them. That sounds actually pretty good. Cause like, especially if you're newer, like I'm sure someone sees best five fish are like, you mean just my five fish? <laughs> you mean all day, all day fishing for those five fish? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so, that, so that actually gets me. That actually that that lays the groundwork. I think you get the general idea of what it is you're dealing with. And and also when you when you pull up the just so people know when you pull up like Tourney X, there's like unlimited opportunities for you to like find it. I mean, you can find a tournament pretty much anytime. Yep. I mean, the whole website, the whole page, the entire page, is tournament opportunities. Just there's there's not but there's like one sponsor. I think it's like bio baits and that is like a half inch by half inch square and then the rest is tournaments so like your opportunities are endless and in terms of it's not just bass right there's trout and all kinds of other stuff right right yeah i mean obviously depending on your area but yeah they have tournaments for pretty much any species and now that it's getting bigger you know there's just more opportunity to get in there and fish can't wait for the gar pike tournament um, <laughs> <laughs> bring it um, <laughs> the, the uh so then like if i'm new and i'm like i'm not really that good at fishing but i got like, i got 25 bucks like i'm gonna i'll put my name out there how like how how competitive does like if i'm like targeting like one of these like newer tournaments like how competitive does it really get like do i have to catch like a 27 inch fish to like even like be in the neighborhood um well the event that we had this weekend the biggest bass was 19 and a half oh that's achievable we did that on smallmouth the other week (laughs) yeah i i mean yeah obviously you know you could get somebody go out there and catch a complete giant and nobody Mm -hmm. else can get anywhere near it but like I said, this this series we kind of made just appeal to anyone, new guys, because it, all it takes is one cast, and you could take home a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I mean, competitive-wise, I think you'd be surprised. There's a lot of guys that fish in these kayak tournaments that are really good, but, you know, nobody is going at somebody else everyone's really cool it's just fun to go and hang out with people and fish with new people and most of the guys are really helpful and they want to they want to help other people out and then obviously there's some guys that don't want anything to do with anyone they just want to take your money (laughs) (laughs) there's sharks everywhere man you can't stop that you can't there's nothing you can do about that See, that's that's what I was gonna ask is like, how competitive is the atmosphere? Like, is there, uh, you know, is, is, <laughs> did your dog just open that door? Yeah, my dog just casually let itself out of my office. No big deal. Straight up, <laughs> open that door, deuces, <laughs> walked out on podcast. She just, she just turned on a light. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> Casual. What was I saying? <laughs> Anyways, so, like, how competitive is the atmosphere? Is there, like, a lot of, like, banter back and forth? Does anybody, like, talk a lot of crap? Like, what's it like? Uh, I mean, you know, I feel like a lot of these tournaments, we've kind of all become buddies. So, any kind of talking going back and forth is really just fun. You know, messing with each other. Good, good natured. Yeah, I... I, I 
don't think I've ever actually seen anyone angry at another person or anything get serious. I thought uh, you were going to say, I've never seen a murder. But I was like, it's good that you just, didn't go that just, far. Just <laughs> simple altercations, man. A little, little punches, you know, here and there. Casual then. MMA encounters on the beach. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I haven't seen anyone jump off their kayak and start swimming at another one or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing except that, to see. Except for that one guy, but he was just <laughs> running from a fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a pike in the boat. Yeah. Dive out. <laughs> Get yeah. out. That's good though. I mean, and that is, I mean, like for for people, if you want to, I always like equated this. Like as soon as I heard about Tourney X, I was like, dude, this is just like fantasy football. I mean, like legitimately, so like it's. Like daily fantasy, like you, you know, you put it in your ten box, set your lineup, bring it on, like talk some trash, whatever. Like it's, you know, that is fun trash. Fun yeah, trash. and it's very much like uh, the third party element of like having like I, I took the picture, a judge, a, a <laughs> totally random faceless judge, like gives me the W. I, what do you want from me? You're sorry, you're not as good. It's good. I mean, but that's nice because it takes <laughs> it takes that it takes that whole like oh, you know, you turned your fish or like you, you fish eye lens or like no, 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 no. We're not no 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 no. No garbage. It's just like you took the picture, judge saw it, boom, you win. Good job. It's that is nice. Um I think that's really cool. And and to clarify, are people are all the people on the same water or is some dude fishing like a stock you know, bass pond. Well, Ooh, good question. I mean, there's mm-hmm. different tournaments. You know, with the whole shutdown and everything, we ran a bracket style tournament that we allowed you to fish any lake, any public lake in the state of Michigan. Mm-hmm. We even had a guy up in the UP who made it really far in the bracket. Um, with all but, those cool, with all those icicle fish. <laughs> yeah, he was doing really good. He was catching some giant smallmouth. Public fish tank, what a baller. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the the live tournaments are typically one lake. Um, you know, sometimes if you're fishing smaller lakes, then we have to open up a couple other lakes just to, so everyone can spread out a little bit because yeah. it's no fun when you're all fishing at for the same exact fish nuts to butts i'm looking for that one 18 incher swimming over on the bed there (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's got the best ned rig (laughs) hey it happens (laughs) (laughs) oh it definitely happens (laughs) well that happens for sure usually in the the tournaments they usually have a rule about um how far away you have to be from another Mm. fisherman so that somebody doesn't just push you off your spot which has happened to me in a tournament before but that's why you carry the dynamite sticks right yeah well that's why you just get a a big weight or a big anchor you know (laughs) just huck it (laughs) see ya (laughs) cinder block just (laughs) later dude yeah that's good though i mean like if you're new it, it can be really intimidating just like anything else like going to the gym i know fantasy doing like if you look at the way they marketed and the way they managed um fantasy fo- i'm a fantasy football nerd by the way and it's mostly because it's just math and i'm a math dork so like i really enjoyed like daily fantasy because it is it is so much a, a math game um but when you're just getting started into something like that, like they, you know, if you look at the way they marketed those, they did a really nice job of like creating a safe space for people who are new. And I think you're doing the right thing. Like if you want to draw people in and you really want to be inclusive, I think it's really cool to be able to say like, no, I mean like it, the one fish concept is such like a cool thing because everyone knows that you're going to luck into a fish every now and then. I mean, like you, if you're fishing a decent bait, like you have just as good of a chance as the pro of like, you know, casting at a, at a giant. And so, um, you know, you're, you're kind of, I think it's really cool. You guys are kind of catering to those folks and then, and, and letting them know like there's a place for somebody who's like, I mean, cause fishermen need it. I mean, let's be real outdoorsmen need it in general. Like we need to be bringing people in. I think it's a really good thing because the more people that are spending money on rods and reels that are buying guns and ammo that are buying camo, you know, boots, what the hell ever, you know, thousand dollars, thousands of dollars on Hobie freaking bumper boards jeff it's like 
here. Twenty dollars. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but it's really, it is really good though because all that money goes towards you know creating more public water, creating more access, more boat ramps, you know, you know, more places to go take out my, um, you know, all three of us to go take our duck blind loaded up uh, hobies. And so it's, it's, you know, it is really good though. And so like I, I guess I would encourage people like if you if you see, you know, if you're listening and you're kind of like, I would like to, especially bass like. I can go catch a big bass. I can go catch a couple medium-sized bass, maybe, or whatever. Um, you know, and you want to meet some people who are trying to do the same thing. It's pretty cool to be able to say, like, there is a place for me. You don't necessarily have to be, like, a, you know, every time you go out, a never-get-skunked guy. Like, I get skunked all the time. It's what I do. But, like, That's you know, nice. you, 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 can go, you can go out and just be, like, a dude and or, or a gal and just, like, you know, be competitive and have a good time. So I think that's really cool. That's awesome. And then, you know, having the app's great because it takes – it takes that whole uh, potential like friction right away from it. It's like, wow, I sent in the picture, got my score. Here's how I did. Like that's, I think that's really cool, and that's definitely a new thing. So I think that's neat. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like the app. Um, judging can be really tough. You get a <laughs> lot of feedback from people. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> feedback, nice. I feel you. I feel you yeah. there. We, we usually have a couple judges and then we kind of, you know, if there's a questionable picture, we all talk about it. And, uh, you know, that way then you don't feel so bad if somebody comes at you like, hey, no, a couple of us agreed on this. It wasn't just me. Here's the name and number of the other guys. You can go after them, too. <laughs> you can go, follow yep, Ben. At. This guy, specifically, here's his Instagram. Here's Ricky. <laughs> go get his ass. Go PM that freaking jerk. <laughs> Dude, Dude. Uh, no, Dude. this is good. Like, it's exactly like uh, football. Like All the zebras get together, and they're like, all right, we're all going to get chewed out over this. So that guy was definitely not a first down. So I have let's, let's, go, let's go get in trouble. <laughs> did you have, did you have judging experience before that in anything? Mm, no. It's it's scary, right? Like I so I I uh, I refereed like wrestling in high school, but I also owned a CrossFit gym for like five years, and we ran competitions there, and I judged those. And I like as the owner, you're automatically head judge. And and Paul's been a few. Uh, he's been in a few of my competitions, uh, and it's been fun. We were on a team one time with freaking uh, one, which is probably <laughs> not allowed because i own the gym but at any rate uh it, it's yeah we've had i've had people freaking blow up on me where i'm like you are no rep that rep yeah exactly i was like that was not a complete rep sorry and it's the same with, with fish you know a little relation here is like yeah that tail was not actually at 19 inches sorry this guy's was over 19 obviously it, it's good to have like objective data i think that you guys are a little safer so i don't know sometimes it's like a little subjective in sports where it's like did did it did it i don't know is it, it's, line. it's very subjective in sports. It, yeah there's always yeah. different opinions but i think like with a bass on a bumper especially like uh, an actual legit board it's got to be like yeah no obviously that's it no, he's saying no. <laughs> the hand placement, the all the oh. zoom fisheye lens. Give me, give me all that. Give me, give me what uh, when you're, yeah, Actually, when you're judging. I think, I think on this note, what I want to ask is how, what is the worst case of like a doctored image that you guys have received? Um, I I can't say that I've gotten you know a doctored picture yet no no instagram like these are how curvy my curves are but really like the mirror behind me is also warped so obviously it's not real <laughs> none of that with the fish no, no, i i you Just know so in turn x it actually tells you like it, it'll it give you like a warning hey this picture looks like it's a screenshot or something like that so i can't and, put my oslo yeah. on there to make the fish look up <laughs> I, I everything that i've seen that's really difficult to to judge is just more in a gray area so uh, like the rainy mouth, images mouth is open uh, and there's a rule that if it's open more than a quarter inch then it's a one inch deduction so then you have to look at it and 
you're like, is that a quarter inch or is that less than a quarter inch? Mm-hmm. And and that's a big you know, deal. An inch is you're out. Right. Yeah. Um, Dude, a half inch, a quarter inch, for sure. So all right. So let me let me follow up this question with how how much can you game? <laughs> measuring a fish if you you just gave me the mouth can be open but not more than a quarter inch can you game the measurement and by how much do you think well so if you have the mouth open you can pre- you can probably get about a half inch out of it maybe, maybe even three quarters of an inch out of it but now if you did that <laughs> it's gonna get marked down a whole inch so yeah, you're yeah. Just it's like losing, a ball <laughs> um I don't know if you guys follow the whole, uh, you know, tournament fishing thing, but there is a, uh, there's been a lot of issues with cheating, whether or not somebody's cheating or, or uh, obviously people are going to be that way regardless. And the more successful somebody is, the more they're going to try and say that they're cheating. So I'm sure that 100%. some people sit there and they honestly think of how can I get away with, you know, getting more, more length out of this fish. Um, but it, they've made it really difficult to be able to do that. Um, Good. I love that. But there it's judging is tough. You, you would think you get a picture of a fish. They say, Hey, it's 18. You look at it. Yep, it's 18. You click good, and you're good to go. But people like to test you, I think. They, like angle of the image? or Yeah, like... they angle it. They, I, I don't, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but I got Ooh. a couple uh, really um, interesting pictures this week, and uh, they had to be DQ'd. Oh, but... no! Yeah. Sorry. So did one listening. of them look like it was wood painted and maybe had like a <laughs> <laughs> on a plaque still, just like had I a found chi- it. Had like a Chili's tag hanging off the tag. <laughs> well, like it's I said, super shiny. we're we're dealing with a lot of uh, newcomers, so I I thought I made the rules pretty clear, but I guess I need to work on my uh, ability to give instruction. Nope. There's no. Need- there's no way to be too clear. It's just not, there's not enough clarity in rules anywhere. Cause this happens in all sports. That's why I was asking is like people, you know, the, the steroid issues in most sports uh, and, and like from my background in CrossFit, like that was huge. Uh, we've had tons of cases of that. Like people always push the envelope, man, even for, for 350 to, you said low prize was like 170 last week. Like, People do that for 20 bucks, dude. <laughs> like They don't care. It's any amount of money that you could win on the line. And yeah, they're going to push the envelope. So, all right. I appreciate that perspective. A lot. <laughs> you, you could fix this very easily by if uh, a bylaw. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. I- <laughs> <laughs> Everybody cheats now. And now every judging session. There you go. Terrible. They don't even need a judge. <laughs> Yeah, forget it. That looks great. By lot 33. <laughs> this guy well, caught an eight foot sturgeon. Does that count? <laughs> luckily, one of my buddies who runs a tournament series over by you guys, I think, um, he told me that he would do the judging for the most part uh, last week, which is good because uh, three, four of us who run this group were in the top five last week so <laughs> so <Ooh>. new <laughs> bylaw hey, wait, wait. I, I did just say paul and i won a crossfit competition at my gym that i <laughs> yeah, own right. so i can't i can't say anything we didn't judge and i smoked everybody yeah it's just because we're better whatever <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's tough it's a tough situation when you're running the show and you know, people are immediately going to look at you and think that you are doing something you shouldn't be doing. So the only thing I can do is just be as fair as possible. And just wave the Hobie hat at them as you, as you roll on by. 
Yeah. <laughs> Pedal sideways. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> See ya, nerd. <laughs> hey, I, uh, actually, I pulled. I pulled a. I actually towed a tri tune to the launch this weekend. Also. Casual. That's so legit. What a power move. I, like, I, oh, have a, a, I have a video. I have video evidence and everything. Dude, that's awesome. Yes. Post that. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is me favoriting it right now. Yeah. That's awesome. 10,000 likes. Dude, that, that's literally a freaking pro angler ad right there. Just go like, oh, by the way, they do this. <laughs> so speaking of which, great transition. We are now through the meet. Although I probably could. <laughs> we probably need to do another episode because. 47 episodes. I'm literally here just like writing down writing down questions but second piece of bread that is going to encapsulate <laughs> our show meat sandwich the is sandwich. we're coming we're coming back so you're on the you're on the hobie fishing team and you've been doing this is that how long has it been since you've been working with them uh i actually just started on their team this year yep but i've been in a hobie for Four years, three or four years. So, so where do we apply for that <laughs> team? Uh, because we would like to be there. <laughs> I have an Arctic Blue, and it's I've my had, first day in it. <laughs> this, this is my second year in a Hobie, so I'm almost halfway there. So, what do I do? <laughs> well, you gotta, <clears throat> you j- really, it's all about relationships with the dealers. Mm-hmm. You know, I I work really hard. I talk to them my my local dealer is summit sports and Uh, they actually ran a tournament series over here so i'd see the manager and every time i'd go and talk to him and you know everything and finally i just went ahead and asked him and uh he said yeah i think that we have an opening for next season so they got me in and it's still, it is a lot of work. I do uh, shows and, you know, I I do demos, but I don't mind talking fishing for a couple hours a day. Or We're doing it right show, now. We've okay. never done that once. <laughs> <laughs> Showing them how awesome a Hobie is. So yeah. it's pretty easy for me anyway. So, 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 so far, all of my questions have been like, you know, like softballs. So here's the, here's the first hardball. <laughs> uh, okay. Like, how scared are you of the Old Town Sportsman with that super dangerous looking logo? Um, I'm I'm not. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> not even a competition. <laughs> Losers, get out of here. <laughs> I I mean I'm not gonna say that I don't think it's cool, but I am kind of um I'm kind of old school. I'm not gonna put a trolling motor on my kayak. I just oh, feel like a kayak is meant to be man-powered. So you're just going to skip right to new legs. You're <laughs> right. going to have you're going to have mechanical uh what you have mercury 350 legs. You have a 13-foot <laughs> bass boat. Like, <laughs> that's that's what you yeah, I like we I posted our video of like, "Hey, we got these boats. We haven't even done a review yet." And people were like, "Why didn't you just get the old town with the freaking, you know, spot lock?" And I was like, Cause I don't want, I don't want it. <laughs> I just don't, I had no, dis- it came out and I was like, no, I just, I don't want that. But also like we do a lot of river fishing and like, I'm not going to have that as like, Oh, this is my big lake boat. My big, my big lake, s- small boat, my kayak <laughs> for big lakes. And then this is my other water. No, I'm not going to do that. Like, I appreciate that you have two kayaks, but you know, you're also trying to get everybody involved. So it's a little different um, for me. Like I'm not going to have two for me and therefore that wouldn't make sense. And I couldn't use that in the river. There's just no way, like depending on the water levels, like it's just not going to happen. And the 360 is so mobile and I can handle that current. Like it was just a no brainer for me. I could see if all the bodies of water around you are just like, big lake you would have taken a bass boat on it anyways maybe and like now you're going to go up into the smaller spots you couldn't like but you can get so many places with a bass boat i don't know Uh, like i'm just i'm not sold on it at all so it had zero appeal to me and i was like ah i'm good i'm going with this though we all know it had to happen 
Well, it had already happened though. Like there were, there were just, there's the Bixby motor, there's the Torquedo, there's the, yes. uh, the, the, the plank of wood on the back of your boat that you rigged up your 55 pound thrust <laughs> trolling motor to. That and is like, a huge, first of all, a, dude, that is a huge thing. People just buying kayaks and like retrofitting them with ultralight. Uh, yeah. That is, and, way, and, well, and, it's just bigger than I thought it was. There's so right, many people and, that have one hanging off the side. I was like, Right. Wait. So why do you think like Ascend Kayaks via Cabela's Bass Pro came out with that one? And by the way, I actually got a chance. I didn't I have not been in one, but I was at Cabela's the other week, like prior to getting my Hobie, just buying some crap and wandered by and they had that out there on the floor like flat instead of standing up like they always have, which is dumb and you can't do anything with. And like I dinked around with it and I was like, what the heck is this? Freak? It's like deep as a canoe. And then you throw your 15 pound battery in there and then you got the, you know, 15 pound trolling motor on it too. And the whole boat itself was heavy. Yeah. AF like twice as heavy as my Hobie, which I've always thought was like the heaviest boat I've ever handled. As far as a kayak goes, this thing is ridiculously heavy plus giant battery plus trolling motor. Like, no, I'm not, I'm just not. And that's a full size trolling motor. Like the Minn Kota that's in the old towns is like short and a little bit smaller and lighter. And this is just plain ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? No way. That's that's not, no longer a kayak. So that's we, we take a hard line on that. No trolling motors. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean I mean I'm not I'm not gonna say old town is isn't good, but that kayak just isn't for me. It doesn't have any you can't get in the hall. There's no hall storage. They just have a little tiny, like eight inch hatch for oh. dry front. Yeah, you I, can't you can't go backwards from the Hobie storage. The Hobie has just like such an overabundance of storage, which is problematic for a fisherman like me because I will bring everything that's in this office with me on a trip if I can. And like just the 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 front cargo is insane. The this you, know, you got your side nets. I added the the Burley Pro side bros on either side of the chair, so I got two more storages there. I got like the bin, and then we got the H crate behind us. Dude, the thing is, and, and especially the 14 foot, which I think at the beginning of this episode we said, obviously there's only one pro angler. It's 14 feet, uh, so there's <laughs> a lot of storage in that thing. It's ridiculous, man. I can't go backwards from that. <laughs> I have to, I have to, I was on the fence. Very, like, he, he was very hard much. considering the old town. Like, we were well, arguing about it for yeah. weeks. <laughs> but I am, I'm an, I have always been in old towns and I appreciate the thing I like about old towns is that they are kind of a, they have the things that you can't add later, right? right. Like, they, they ensure that, like, the things that you, like, you can't customize some of the things that they are like, like providing you, they give you a blank slate and then they're, it's an expensive blank slate, but they're giving you a lot to work with. And they're, they're typically very open, very customizable. Um, they're kind of an old man boat, I think a little bit like that's like, like, I don't know. That's just how I've always like viewed them. And thus I buy like old man things. It's just like what I do. Um, <laughs> I had the, I had the predator MX. I, it was the things that you couldn't like add into it, like quality plastic. The, the hull was indestructible. It's the only uh, like lifetime warranty on a hull that you're going to get. Um, for, th for those of you questioning Paul dragging his kayak across a parking lot. <laughs> never, never had a problem with it. I, I love that boat. But there are <laughs> there are some things that I didn't like, including that it didn't come in real camo. Still sticks in my craw. But like, <laughs> but there were a couple of things like the 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 there's actually a an astonishing lack of like comparison of the drives like the hobie the hobie mirage versus the 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 old town drives like i there's ahead. actually a there's actually a newcomer that i was going to ask mike about here so have you heard of the oh god it's like a lightning strike uh yeah i has it has a copy hobie drive have you seen that i have I saw it. So if you guys watch uh, Natalie up north, and this is like by no means a dig, by no means a dig, but Natalie up north just got this, and I was watching it the other day. And I was checking out this boat. She did a walkthrough, and it it's like the Outback, 
kind of like where it's got like the recessed cup holders that are like molded and uh it, it looks like an out it looks very close to an outback and it's got the same kind of mirage drive and i was like hang on a second here so like is, is that a, like is, is hobie noticing that happening that's the only one i've seen but i was like what the heck I, the funny thing is my buddy brought that exact video up to me yesterday. Yes. He said that he he saw it and thought, oh, Bro, that's it's a fake Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> Why'd they take all the decals off of it? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I, I mean, I don't think Hobie's worried about that. You know, they let the patent go on their old drive for a reason. Mm. They got the mm-hmm. 60 drive now. Don't which need it. Is, uh, I mean, it took me a second to get used to the 360. Yes. But now it's just second nature, and it's just it's a man powered troll spot lock, you know. Yeah. 100 percent, so, man. It's like we were saying we we had 50 mile an hour winds, and I was like, th- this in the 180 would piss me off. I couldn't even imagine in like the the non 180 drive like okay we're doomed here like I'm just re- reliant on rear steering only we're we're done and like even with the 180 you're just like every time I get into trees on the river or get turned around I'm like reverse forward reverse forward and then the 360 was a freaking joke like so yeah okay so yeah I, I imagine because I didn't see any straps on that at all so I imagine it was very much like like the first iteration of the drive, which is all rear driven by your rudder only, which like big water, low wind, that's fine. But you know, get in a situation. Yeah. Salt water. You get in a situation with current. We fish rivers a lot. Um, You know, you get wind on you like, uh, no, I'm I'm not about that life. (laughs) 360 is like life changing. Absolutely. The only thing that you could really do with it is troll. Yeah. Trolling straight lines. <laughs> Let's not talk too much crap about just trolling the straight I mean, lines, but <laughs> I love me a troll. Like it's fine. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this: Where does the Outback fit in now? Because that 360 drive is is obviously like a unique feature, and like the they've pro pr- anglers, they've priced the pro angler with the 360 at a place where they've clearly, and then we did, they just updated the Outback, right? I mean, like it's still new and um, to me it's still sweet new. update though I oh mean, shoot i mean it's not the same boat but so that was my question i was like where does like where do we feel like the outback fix because i feel like people that sort of look at the price point of the pa and they're like that's not on my radar which is <laughs> i mean let's i didn't know clear. kayaks could cost that much yeah <laughs> totally I'm, so. I'm not trying to be like like oh i'm rich and i like but like you know if you there's just an amount of money that you feel like you can justify spending on a kayak and i like the pa is it, up until like a week ago, it was like not even on my, it was not on my radar. And so I've, I've identified with a lot of people that are like, eh, no, the Outback is like what tops a lot of people's list is like the king of non, you know, $5,000 kayaks. So like, where, do, like, where do we feel like that sits now? Cause I, I do feel like there's a lot of newcomers in that like $2,500 to like $3,500 range, you know, I, there's like, there's probably three or four brands that are like kind of getting up there, especially with all the pedal drives that are coming out. And it's not just like Jackson kayak anymore. Right. Uh, I mean, the Outback has its place. I'd say the Outback is more of a river boat. You can still paddle that thing really well, but uh, I guess a lot of people use it out in open water too. But if you're, you know, strictly bass fishing and you're flipping docks all the time then it's going to be a little more difficult i mean you can stand up in them obviously not as stable as the pas but uh i mean i've only fished out of an outback one time and that was down in florida in some salt water Mm -hmm. and you know i was fine with it but I'm used to a pro angler and just trying to flip in the mangroves and that thing standing up is not easy. Um, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not super small and I'm not as, uh, 
I don't have as good a balance as I should, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't see the Outback going anywhere. Um, but Hobie also, you know, now they have their lower budget kayaks too, that a lot of people are getting into. Um, cause I think that the compass, yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to go on prices cause I have no idea how much they it's cost. like, it's like sub two grand though, right? Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. And I mean, they're still a legit kayak, but they do use their older drive on those. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not 180. It, it's rear driven by rudder only. Uh, that's your steering. And, and yeah, for anybody that hasn't tried to steer by rudder only, it's like half as good as using a paddle. Like 50% as good. <laughs> so, like you'd rather paddle and you're going to just have the rudder down straight to keep you drifting as as good sideways as you can which is like what the skeg does such a good job of accomplishing with the pro angler uh but yeah it's just no comparison and and like i'm with you i've sat in a in in the outback before uh and it just does not feel nearly as stable to me it feels more like so Paul's MX was was like the the super stable because it's super wide for its length uh, from Old Town. And I had an Old Town 13, uh, which was less stable than the MX because it's longer but not wider. So it's less stable. And going from that to the out sitting in the outback, it felt very similar. And sitting in the pro angler is like a no, no comparison. And for proof of that. If you guys have watched a YouTube video where we went and fished a dam, I literally hit some crazy freaking water that very extreme currents hit me at the side and like rotated the boat. And the Hobie actually like went sideways, but the water didn't even crest the hull. Like I I went completely sideways at a high current with no stability whatsoever, not even close to flipping, like just pushed me into the trees and then couldn't even flip me in the trees. which was insane to me. Like, and I had faith in it before that, but that sort of just said like, this boat's basically invincible. Like, and and now with the 14, it's even wider, like you said. So it's even more stable than the 12 was. So I'm not worried at all, which is probably a bad thing because I need to have some fear in my life. Uh, Otherwise I'm going to go wreck myself. (laughs) So stay tuned for flipping the 14. What's that? You spoiled yourself because I, I just... Anything I've ever been in after a pro angler is just not good enough anymore. And I don't want to sound like one of those guys, but, but you are, uh, but, but I also am. it's reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got a buddy who fishes out of a Titan all the time and we're always going back and forth on it. And, you know, uh, <laughs> I, so the funny thing is like, Paul egged me on about this forever and he never actually got in my pro angler, but I invited him to like, Hey dude, take my kayak one time. I don't care. And go ride it around. He never did that. And now he's in the 360, mind you, he has some hiccups to fix, which we didn't even get into, Mm -hmm. but he'll, he'll be, he'll be running at hundred percent very soon. But like stability wise, he at least got to stand and fish in it a whole bunch. And like, I mean, would you say it's any comparison even to the MX, which is very stable, yeah, no, it's not even close. I mean, it's not close. I, I can, like, do a 360 standing up. It's Backflip in, in, to a pistol squat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the PA, I mean, you can legitimately stand up, turn around without really any concern, reach in the back of your boat, screw around in, the, in, in that old town, which I would recommend to anybody. I don't care what anybody says. I know we got the freaking the Hobie squad here, but if you're looking for a not, if you're looking for a paddle kayak, dude, Old Town, I love. I still, I, I wish I was, I wish I had enough money, means to to that not boat. get rid of that boat because I would, I, honestly, in the river, going downstream, going downstream, I'm not sure that I would get out of that boat because I would drop the drag chain. I would drop the drag chain and I would legit paddle maybe five or six times <laughs> in like a in a in miles of a stretch. And I love that boat. But but there is no comparison on on stability. It's not close. It is legit not close. Storage, not even close. And granted, I was in an older version of the of that of that boat, but it's dude, it's not even close. And like, but you are paying for it. 
No, oh, 100. percent But is we're in the we are talking about the Yeti of kayaks. But sure. isn't isn't that like everything else? Yes. See, that's the For thing. The it's part. like I feel like we'll, the we'll bonafide post- 117 is probably the closest thing in terms of value. Yeah. But but if you're gonna pay a premium, I don't really think there's any other option that's gonna be worth the be worth the premium. It's it's funny, which is why I, I have one. There's always people on both sides of the fence where there's people that will say, uh, I have like I posted the the Hobie H crate video on my YouTube this week, right? And immediately got some hate because people not hate like a, <laughs> it's very low level hate. I'm just saying there's a few people that are like, oh, I got my milk, my milk crate, which I mentioned in my video. Like I had one for a long, long time. It was my first crate. And they're like, oh, I got this crate. And it's like, it's fine. It was 20 bucks and it does great. I'm like, true. hundred percent. I'm not saying those don't work or kayaks that don't cost $4,700 <laughs> don't work of course they do you can definitely paddle around and gosh dang you can catch fish but at the end of the day it's kind of like you step up from your your car that you bought when you were in high school on the very little amount of money that you were making work in a retail job and now you're making a real money and a career in your life and you step up like when i went from my first car was a chevy corsica and that's very much like my uh i have a mainstream which was a hundred dollars that's my sit-in kayak it's red white and blue and i love her to death and i keep her but uh that is my cheap kayak and then i stepped up when i got a career i bought like a brand new silverado and like obviously there's no comparison to that chevy corsica and that's just like how all things are in life you can level up and obviously sitting in that that higher cost higher value better thing is going to feel great you don't have to do that but you got to know that if you do that obviously you're going to be happy like it's going to be your forever boat like i don't really see unless hobie comes out for whatever reason with a 720 drive then i don't see (laughs) why i would ever get rid of my 360. (laughs) wait are they coming out with the 720? (laughs) Straight to the 720. Uh, they're, they're, I, I mean, I'm sure that they're going to do something, but uh, it's going to be tough to tap the 360. I would imagine that they're just going to make improvements on the 360, at least yeah. for the next few years. But, yeah. but Hobie, please make it something we can upgrade our current kayaks to. <laughs> like, like the fact that you couldn't. The marketing director it. is like, shut up, Jeff. <laughs> But I, come on, man. The 180 to the 360. I bought the 180 three months before the 360 dropped. And like mine, the 180 had been out for what? Five, six, seven years. Like a long time at that point, right? Like like five years, yeah. Five years, yeah. Uh, was it? I think it was actually only three. It came out in... 2015, 16? 17. Really? Yeah. So... See, I was like, oh, this is like the best thing there is for pedal kayaks. Let's go. And then, boom, 360 drive. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, <laughs> Dang it. And then I was like, okay, cool. Can I just retrofit this drive? No, you can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Well, the, the next upgrade is going to be a whole upgrade. And then that'll mean anything that you try and buy is going to be. It'll be like the Outback where the Outback was like, oh, we changed everything that's molded into the hull so you have to buy a whole brand new boat (laughs) to get that so yeah they're gonna hit us with that no new drive but like new everything uh i'll probably buy it (laughs) (laughs) i'll probably do the same thing i just did because i wasn't gonna upgrade my boat right (laughs) and paul's like yo i'm getting the 360 i don't care what you say this is my this is this is gonna be my closing thought so I was going to go with the old town. I was pretty, I was like, I was. Which one though? What, what were you pedal, actually? The, the um, sportsman. Yeah. The, the I was going to go with the, I was going to go with the predator. The uh, predator. Yes. Because the price was right. I knew the boat and it had the, it had the pedal that I wanted. And it had a couple of the other upgrades too, like the little cockpit storage and some of the other stuff that I was like, dude, if I just had these like couple little things, it wouldn't have even cost me that much money. By the time I sold my current Predator and just upgraded, I pretty much would have gotten almost everything that was in the Sportsman. It would have just been on my Predator platform. And the Predator platform actually had a couple of things that I think they should have put in the Sportsman. If if 
if you're asking my personal opinion. <laughs> but um, the uh, I was like right there because I'm like, dude, this won't even cost me that much money. Like this is like a kind of a no-brainer. The things that the things that got me were the again the things you can't add into a boat. And I was I was actually comparing it to the price range of buying a 180. And I was like, well, I could get a 180 for like almost the same price. Like I might as well just get the bigger hull and all the storage and all the other stuff comes with the PA, but just do it in the 180, no big deal. And then I'm like, okay, the 360 just came out. The 180 has been out for a long time. And what's going to happen is I'm going to buy the 180 and I'm going to, you know, buy it in 2020 when it just died. And then I compared it to like, you know, buying a car or something else. And I'm like, or your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. It's like, buy, it would be like, then oh, the 720 the drive dropped. <laughs> the 10 R just came out. Give me the eight S or I don't know. You know, like you get what I'm saying. Like you don't like you, I knew if I'm already going to go out and spend the money, I was like, dude, just, well, my, my wife really gave me the green light. She said, go get what you want. So if you're ever listening to this, which she probably will she actually, does. she does she listen. Does listen. Thank you. Um, but I mean, realistically, hey, though, yeah, but that really is something where it's like, you know, if it is an investment and you have the means and you're not going to go bankrupt, like, yeah, it, I'm not mad at myself for doing it. But it, that was the reason. that, And that's why I texted Jeff. I was like, dude, I'm going to go with the 360 because what's going to happen? I'm going to buy this 180 and two years from now, I'm going to be kicking myself in a big way. Dude. And I was like, great. Here we go. <laughs> I guess I'm getting one too. And, and like the, tr unfortunately the trade in on the 180 was like not great, but I mean, we did, we did what we could with it. I think I got a decent amount. Like it's hard to sell those on uh, like Facebook marketplace, especially right now. Like right now is just like not a good time to sell at all. <laughs> but like, even before I listed it last year, I was like, ah, let's see what like people are willing to, pay for this thing and it's just not you know they just don't it, it's like you're not going to that shop you're not really hitting the people that are like i want a hobie pro angler they're, they're the ones that are go to the shop and like get a brand new right so it's, it's hard to hit the guys and then you're getting hawked at and it's like nah no thanks guys <laughs> i'm not gonna give you this for twelve hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. so is what it is but yeah i mean i think i think we made a good decision right paul paul paul's got to fix his Paul broke his. Paul broke got, his boat. I got wrenches to turn. You'll you'll be seeing a video on it for sure. Mine mine's still in good shape. The fishes, but I've I've got some. I, I am I'm the dude that needs to. Uh, I I like to understand like A to oh. Z. I like to know every single little thing about it. To be honest with you, if they gave it, if they had like a, you ever heard of a kit car? Where you like go make you go build your own car? You ever heard of that? You buy like you buy a, an unassembled car. I'd probably go that route, like on kayak, like, and I would totally do it wrong. And I would, but like I'm, I would know that I'm learning it from scratch. And it's the same. I do the same thing with fishing and everything else. So that's that's how I'd like to do it. So I'm actually kind of glad I'm where I am. But I got some wrenches to turn on mine. But I'm happy with my purchase. Love the Hobie. Um, but I have to. I, in closing. In closing. Dude, it's freaking. It's you getting messed old. with the global adjustment, didn't you? So I already Wait. know what's going on with the global well, adjustment. Like, oh, Paul. <laughs> Paul First broke of it. all, no, and no, and the global adjustment was the last thing I touched. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did touch it, but like here was no, Paul I and I. Oh, here was Paul and I at the boat ramp. I'm like, my brand new boat was preset Buckle Lake, so I was ready to go. So I'm like on the water, and Paul's like. Yeah, we got to build this. So we built it. We built his in my driveway, like plastic wrap. Everything had to come off everything. And we put it together. And guess what? We forgot on the 360 drive handle. There's a little pin <laughs> that goes through it so that the you can actually pin. turn the drive. <laughs> that actually, though, if you're reading the instructions and, you know, we've got a Hobie staffer here. So I got something to say. When you look Lost. at the instructions, <laughs> when you say. look. When you look at the instructions, they don't actually show that pin going in. It's there if you, like, get your magnifying glass out and look super hard. But it's actually not called out. Well, there's this thing called YouTube. Don't even. Oh, here we go. <laughs> See, this is what's wrong with the planet Earth. you got to have the internet up if you want to do anything. And if you don't like the video, you can't put your kayak together.
You <laughs> you run a podcast that is hosted on a YouTube channel. Shut up, Paul. <laughs> God damn I'm it. just saying it makes me upset. And this is more of a radio program, so I like to think that I'm on the. I like the to think radio I'm is on. dead, Paul. The radio is dead. <laughs> Turn your AM dial. That was it. That's my closing thought. I'm out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so no, Mike. Seriously. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh man. So yeah, we're we're <laughs> we got the the newest Hobie person right here in Paul and like I've had one iteration I still make lots of mistakes what Mike what I gotta ask you is what would you say to somebody who's on the fence about this whole Hobie thing because like Paul has said a few times it it feels at first unreachable like that's an extremely expensive kayak and is it really worth that much uh what would you say to that person to kind of push them over the fence well, first of all, I tell them to sit in one and try it out because that was the selling, that was what sold me. The second I sat in one, I was sold. But, uh, I mean, you we spend hours in our kayaks. The way I figure it, you might as well be comfortable. You know, I, I started off with an Ascend, and that thing was not very comfortable. I sat in that thing for three hours, and then I couldn't stand up afterward. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I mean, just do what a, If you, you can financially do it, and it's not going to kill you to do it, and that's what you want, go for it. I'm not going to tell you you have to, you know, but... I think it's worth it. I know my buddies who I convinced to get into Hobie too. They they think it's worth it. So uh, yeah, I I let the product speak for itself. There you go. That's the way to do it. Hundred percent. You get what you pay for, no doubt. Yeah. Sweet. And a lot of lakes I go through, I have to go through culverts and everything, and putting the rods horizontally is key. (laughs) Uh Mm. (laughs) Go check out the YouTube channel. Jeff has a story about this. (laughs) There was one time. Yeah. If they stand vertically, you're yeah. Sad times have happened. A hundred percent. And with that 14 foot guys, you get six, six rod holders. That's insane. At least 12 rods in them. Yeah. Yeah. You got 100% double them up. I did that in my 12 before because that that the 12 unfortunately only has four, which is you know you think good but not great. <laughs> so yeah, I like that though. Like because if you have the three per side, if you're like me and you want to leave one side open for like your net extra paddle, hog trough, all that stuff, you keep the one side with that little uh, H rail holder for like the the butt end of the rod. Yeah, you punch six right in there. Like you got plenty of rods for the day. I would say. For sure. Sweet. <laughs> if six, if twelve rods is not enough for you, you need a boat. Have a nice day. <laughs> First of all, you're not going hard. Yeah. Go harder. Yeah, you're go harder. <laughs> um, with that, I will definitely say, Mike, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, dude, we, I, I appreciate, we appreciate the insight. Um, I do think it's really cool what you're doing um, on the tournament side. I know I'm going to be. We we talked about this. We're we're talking about dabbling. I already know where I'm going for my first tournament for sure. Um, you'll see me out there in the uh, the old Arctic camo, pretending like it's real camo. Um, <laughs> but no, like shots, legitimately, thank you for the time. Wins. We really appreciate it. He'll be like, "This is a 21 inch bass." <laughs> <laughs> it's well, 20, Paul. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for having me. I had fun chatting with you guys. Yeah, hopefully, absolutely, man. Hopefully, we can fish sometime. Oh no, it's gonna happen. <laughs> you're locked in now sorry you're stuck with us we've got a list you're at the top of the list we gotta <laughs> we gotta make this list happen we gotta go on some trips for sure Sounds and good. with that where, where can people find you uh on instagram uh catch a cow Gosh, <laughs> with a k man. with a k okay with a, with a Not k the cow part the catch part catch with oh, a k cow part. oh and the cow part that's right yeah yeah so so at catch a cow with a K at the catch and a K at the cow. Go follow people. Anywhere else, Mike? 
Uh, Facebook, uh, Mike Ketch, Ketchkowski. It'll be in the show notes, people. Follow this guy. You got a YouTube yet? This is this is what I do every end of the episode. Do I you have do, YouTube? but it's not good. So I only got one video out, and it's not good. So it's not good. You're not saying or it's not good yet. Time to follow people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you got five more videos coming out before the end of the year. So guys, go check out. What's your YouTube channel? Catching fish. Catching fish. Oh, Come wait, on. It's, it's just catching. I think I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> That's how good it is. If you guys can find the YouTube channel, you win. <laughs> I don't know what you win, but you win following Mike, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, awesome, man. Well, hey, I appreciate having you on. Like, Thanks for your time. This has been fantastic. Uh, it, guys, go follow him. Go check out the Instagram. Go check out the Facebook. And you can follow us uh, at Burley Fishing on Instagram, Facebook, Burley Fishing on YouTube, and then for the podcast, obviously, if you guys like this episode, subscribe, throw us a five-star review, drop us a comment so that you can let us know what you want us to talk about next and maybe some ways to improve the show. We appreciate any feedback you guys can give us. Uh, but this has been the Burley Fishing Podcast, and we'll see you guys out on the water. Bye.